Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of iHana. Tonight, we are inspecting the macro lens for micro photography. Now, basically, what this is, it's an inverted piece of glass that makes tiny things look big. And I figured this would be really helpful for micro fishing because there's some species that you need a lot of finesse to identify. So, that's what we're going to be going after tonight. Uh, some lake and stream species that take a little bit of finesse to identify. Anyways, let me show you what is included in this kit. There are, I think, seven pieces of eyeglasses here, and there's a little clip that you can attach to your phone, and it makes the phone look like this. But all of the ones that like, were just sold individually for five bucks, they all look super cheap, and all these look, look pretty good. So, I don't know. We'll see how it works out. Let's get on the lake and try and catch a, a little fish here. All right, so here we are down at the water, and you can see there are absolute ton and i mean a ton of little sunfish down here but that's not what we're after we're after something a little more micro -y. um also i did see something interesting uh, there's a crappy magnet bag here and it looks like there's stuff inside yeah give me <laughs> there's a chartreuse crappy magnet what dude these are like little frogs all oh, those little fish too oh that was, that's a torn up frog bro i gotta try these out and in they go that is a toe biter. Um, I forget the Latin name of that family, but that is a very painful species, and they get a lot bigger than that. I mean, like, like easily five times the mass of that. <laughs> they get huge. <laughs> oh, oh, so close to getting the large mouth. No. All right, so we've been searching after our quarry here for an hour now. Uh, we've only found two of them that were big enough to catch. All the others were like really, really tiny. So we're bringing out the secret weapon because the big ones won't bite. We're going to be using the net now to try and catch these fish. Because um, I tell you, the one time you want to catch a mosquito fish, they just like, nope. <laughs> it's like, what the heck? <laughs> so uh, that's what we're going to be doing right now. Got him. <laughs> so there's our first specimen. Of course, it does not count towards lifeless because it was on a net. Um, I already have the species like a million times over, so it really doesn't really matter anyways. But uh, yeah, that is an eastern mosquito fish. I believe it is an eastern mosquito fish. Look, they had my hand on a toe biter there. That was kind of scary. <laughs> I believe it's an eastern mosquito fish because they have higher anal ray counts and dorsal ray counts. Uh, the numbers you need, you need to remember are, I think, 6, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. So we're going to do a quick check here and compare how this camera works with the other camera right here. And um, I'll give you my opinion on that. All right, so that did not come out very good at all. So we're going to go to nearby creek here and try to take a, photos of another fish over there, a tessellated darter. They're spawning this time of year, so we do have a chance to get like a really, really colorful one along some other cool species that live in that stream. Uh, we're at the next spot now. If you recognize this place, then you probably recognize it for a reason. That is because we already did a video here this year. It was the, I was actually reviewing the little photo tank I made. Uh, I really like this spot for doing videos like that because there's no new species to distract me. And um, well, there's just a really cool assemblage of species here. They're also really close to home and whatever. So yeah, we're gonna see what we can catch here. Oh, here's a tessellated darter. Here's our target right here. I finally found one. Got it, got it, got it. Now I got it. Ooh. So yeah, this one is Ethiostoma olmsteady atromoculatum. And um, all the subspecies of tessellated darters, or I think all of them, they, they've done extensive studies on this. Uh, because of the, the vast availability of habitat, and I guess a spawning habitat that is, and the little competition over it, uh, these fish have evolved a very complex social order when it comes to spawning. The, the dominant males will spawn with a female. This is a female, you can see that, you can see that ovipositor right there when you squeeze it, it'll kind of like come out a little bit. That's for helping place eggs when they're uh, laying eggs and spawning. But yeah, the females will spawn with the dominant male, and then both of them will abandon the nest. And then later, a subdominant male will come around oh no, and guard the eggs, take care of the eggs, maintain them, keep all the fungus off of them and whatnot. And then the eggs will hatch and they'll leave like that. All right, so let's, let's do one more comparison here with and without the macro lens. This is with the macro lens. So let's do one without the macro lens. Very beautiful specimen. Not the kind of beautiful we're looking for though. Next tessellated darter is an absolute beautiful male. We're gonna try and catch it here. If we can find it, there he is. You can see those really dark head pattern. Nope. Oh no, come on. Ah. Let's try this again. This time with a caddis fly as bait. Oh, where'd he go? He's gone. He's gone. Okay, good. So many tessellated darters here. You can see, what is that? One right there. Uh, one right there. 
Well, there's another one right there, big one, and a small one over there, but no big males, man. We're still gonna keep looking for the big males, but my headlamp is getting a little dim. So, uh, we, we gotta find one soon here. Show me what you got. Got him. Oh, that is a beautiful tessellated darter. Oh my gosh, look at that. Beautiful. It's hard to believe the first one I saw was even more colorful than that, but this one is just, dude, look at that second dorsal. Such a cool second dorsal. I wonder if we can see the eyes, the pores. Yeah, I can't really see him. Oh, I was taking photos and he let himself go. Oh, well, oh, you can see him right over there. Yeah, that is an absolute beautiful male tessellated darter. Like, I don't know. Oh, there he goes. Like, I don't know what the ratio of dominant males to subdominant males is, but it must be like 125 because I've seen like 40 so far, and that's the second super male I've seen. Oh, pretty old ace. Pretty dace. Look at you. All right, tiny set of an eastern black nose dace for Nick Thieves Echtulis. Going back. Good amount of orange on them. More than I've ever seen before. Cool. That outro light is horribly bright. Um, but I'm glad for one thing, this is the seventh time I filmed a video here. Every single time prior, there had been two people on the porch just behind the camera there. Uh, they just sit out all night and just watch me running around the woods. It'd be like, honey, what's that crazy guy running out there with a flashlight? Oh, I don't know. It must be a real psychopath. Let's sit on the porch all night and watch him. See if we won't call the police or not. <laughs> but now finding it's like, oh, honey, it's the guy that screams darters in the middle of the night. He's like, oh yeah, I love this guy. I don't know why people people aren't subscribed to him. Y'all should go subscribe to him. Anyways, I'm gonna go back inside and <laughs> eat hot dogs and go to bed. Oh, no. Now on to serious business. Uh, this little thing here, uh, quality, I'm gonna do it three things. I'm gonna do it quality, uh, cost, and usefulness in terms of micro fishing. For quality, I actually think these are built pretty darn well. I kind of like them. They got like little lens caps on them. They're pretty they're like aluminum or something. I don't know. I would give them probably about seven red lip shiners. Uh, cost. I would give it maybe about negative four red lip shiners because this was a waste of money for me when my phone can just pretty much do the same exact thing uh, as these things can. Uh, so that brings back <laughs> that brings me to the next thing, which is I guess what was it usefulness in terms of micro fishing uh, for photography. I'll give it just one red lip shiner out of ten red lip shiners, um, just because like I saw pretty much no difference and the quality of using a macro lens and using the regular iPhone lens. In fact, I was curious if like the, you know, the quality and the quality of the two lenses was because I was taking photos of something below the water's surface. So I tested it out on the like little slug that was going by here and the two images pretty much look exactly like. I don't think there's a big difference between them. So yeah, that's my review of the macro lens and for micro fishing. Um, I do not suggest it. You lying! Say eight. It was uh, kind of a waste of money for me, so there's like 18, you know, dollars down the drain. Oh well. <laughs> Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next time.